Welcome to the Strange Sky Project. We have definitely something strange in store for you today, and especially something strange in the sky. Today we tackle the Firmament Dome. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. That's right. I'm a 100% card-carrying, full-blown, flat-earth believer. Well, it's kind of impossible not to be once you see what I have here in this footage. Because in truth, there are hundreds of proofs that would prove my point of me not being on a spinning ball and living on a flat-ish type of surface, and that our whole concept of reality, including our ideas of space, have been indoctrinated to us since, I don't know, preschool? Well, any flat earther would tell you that the holy grail of so-called proofs for the flat earth would be the firmament dome. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. If we could just provide observational proof and evidence that there was a structure above us, a structure above the clouds, a structure that enclosed us in an enclosed system, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, the Firmament Dome, of course. Well, what you're watching right now is the proof. Because behind the beauty and absolute magnificence of those passing by clouds is the structure of the Firmament Dome. And they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Ooh-wee do I get excited when I see that every time. It's hard not to, because it's just as astonishing to me as it is to you. Yep, right there, behind the clouds, is the firmament dome. Now you're probably wondering about some context here. Let me give it to you. Around May in 2016, precisely at 8.18 in the evening, you know, the sun is still out just a little bit as it starts to set there in those summertime months, I decided to take a time lapse while I still had the light. So I positioned my camera vertical, so I took footage directly above it, and took my time lapse and proceeded to immediately forget about it. And it was only when I looked through the archives trying to actually find footage of chemtrail planes, like the one you see right there disappearing into the firmament dome. Yeah, that's right. Take a close look. It disappears into that crack that you can clearly make out. Naturally, I was beyond astonished because before me was the holy grail of flat earth research, the undeniable visual proof of the existence of the firmament dome. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man. Please take a great look here. Use your discernment and your inspecting eyes and see what you have here. See that it lies beyond the clouds, above them. See that there's a texture there, something super solid and gritty. I want you to use your God-given intuition and I really want people to compare what you're seeing here in my footage to the vast amounts of information and knowledge that's currently out there, to all the meticulous descriptions preserved in print, and of course the limited but miraculous photographic and visual evidence at our disposal. So here's a guy, I believe he's in Southern Latitudes, took this video of so-called grid lines in the sky. Um, it's the dome firmament and uh, you can see that when he zooms in on the star the grid scales with the zoom in fact the star scales with the zoom and that pretty much proves the nearness of the uh, celestial firmament when that pretty much proves the nearness of the uh, celestial firmament Behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. 
As I prepare to release this video, I wanted to make sure that I left no stone unturned. I wanted to make sure that this footage provided an airtight argument that critics couldn't dismantle. I knew if I could show my footage to be flawless and authentic, then people would start having to take this quite seriously, and we as a movement of people looking for the truth might actually be able to make impactful strides and gains against evil and in this great war between deception and truth. There was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Work of a sapphire stone. There appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone. It was as the color of the terrible crystal. Were a paved work of a sapphire stone. A sapphire stone. Were a paved work of a sapphire stone. Were a sapphire stone. As the appearance of a sapphire stone. Color of the terrible crystal. In 1990, an Italian geologist would find an unusual stone while visiting Sierra Leone. A mysterious artifact that has baffled all who have studied it. A blue stone with mysterious white lines upon its surface. To his surprise, tests revealed that it was not a turquoise, or indeed anything that could officially be identified. Furthermore, the blue stone didn't correspond to any known mineral. But the most intriguing thing is its color. Researchers stone. still do not understand how the stone has acquired or retained its color. This stone. even though several universities and laboratories have analyzed the artifact at great length. It seems its color remains a mystery. The stone underwent several tests with use of strong acids, but none of the acids could affect the stone. It was even stone. heated to over 3000 degrees Celsius, yet its composition wasn't altered. When a small piece of the stone was pulverized and viewed under the microscope, it curiously lost its color. According to analysis, an amazing 77.17% of the stone is somehow made of pure oxygen. The remaining percentage was divided between carbon, calcium and another unknown element. When researchers crushed a piece of the skyrock and then enhanced the extractions with ultrasound, they were eventually able to locate an organic compound unknown to science. Dated at 55,000 years old, there has in fact been similar finds in other places of the Earth, made mostly of pure oxygen in existence. Yet the mystery surrounding their makeup and origin persists to this day. Certainly we are a lot closer today to solving that mystery. The evidence is mounting up. It's going to be impossible to deny the existence of our reality and the truth of where we live. What side are you on? Join us. Fight for truth.